all know how I feel about fanfics that involve real people, right? Well, let's just say the following fanfic will make Hamo Hamster's work look like masterpieces. Today I'm going to be reviewing a fanfic called How the Rip Stole Reviewing. This is a very unique fanfic because it's not written down. It's on YouTube and it's a video. What you guys are going to be hearing is the audio of the video and we're going to pretty much hear the entire thing. So, let's not waste any time. And let's start this video and see what it's about. How do it still work here? I fuck some more Gaylord. Everyone on the web liked reviewers a lot, but the rip who came from YouTube and Twitter did not. Repeated that guy with the glasses to death. Cause each critic on their can't stop wasting their breath. He made videos that were generally insulting. He made remarks that sounded really revolting, and it was so obvious due to his tweets that he wanted attention on the busy street. And when the year 2011 began, he stood there on New Year's Day, hating the fans, staring from his spaceship with a skateboard toothpick at the warm, lighted windows below in the States. For he knew every fan of that guy with the specs was busy now, watching those critical wrecks. The nostalgia critic. He snarled with a sneer. Then moving deep down. How I hate all these queers. Then he growled with his skateboard wheels nervously turning. I wish all fake critics could quickly start burning. For tomorrow, he knew all the over 15s would wake bright and early. They'd rush for their screens, and then, oh, the noise, oh, the noise, 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 noise. They'll never stop laughing. The noise, 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 noise. Then the fans, young and old, would put up with what's ass. And the ass, oh, the ass got those ass, 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 ass. They cannot skip Samson or Windows bullshit, which was something we couldn't stand one little bit. A PHEM may do something he liked least of all. Everyone in America, the tall and the small, would sit on their chairs with faces of glee. They'd waste all their cash on their cash and DVDs. They'd spend and they'd spend and they'd spend, 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 spend. When the root thought, will this gimmick ever end? And the more the root thought of this fake reviewing, the more the root thought. I must stop this whole thing. Why? For five long years I've put up with it now. I must kill that guy with the glasses. But now. Then he got an idea. An awful idea. The Rip got a wonderful, awful idea. I know just what to do. The Rip left in his throat. And he made a quick Doug Walker hat and a coat. And he chuckled and clucked. What a great skateboard trick. With this coat and this hat, I look just like that brick. All I need is a co-host. The Rip looked around. But, since he's no critic, there was none to be found. Did that stop the skateboard? No. The Rip simply said, if I can't find the co-host, I'll make one instead. So he called his slave, Hank. Then in ten seconds quick, he dressed him up just like the nostalgia chick. Then loaded his giant, dark green army tank, got the parachute set and hitched up a little Hank. Then the root said, to war. And the wind came to blow, the tank over from Hawaii to Chicago. Illinois was a bit, pollution filled the air, all because Hank has so much gas on the way there. Root flew over the nearest city's avenue and got out his camera to film a review. He mimicked the nostalgia critic like hell and reviewed the whole state, not forgetting to yell. Like Douglas would do, he blew some things up. The buildings, the people, the kitties, the pups, and fed Hank the ashes in a fairground teacup. His encounters with police cars were major of slits, but if Nazis could do it, then so could the rip. Eureka, Grand Tower, El Paso, Wyoming, Atlanta, the Tavia and Cairo were burning in a time even shorter than Dr. Chicago. Illinois was all gone, except for Chicago. The Rip took the corpses of Sam's to Doug's house. He rolled through the window quiet as a mouse. Or so he thought, because his wheels made a slight squeak when stealing all the things Doug prepared for next week. These pies, the Rip grinned, are the first things to go. While his noise woke up someone he didn't even know. Someone had been woken up at 30 past 3. And now, grin the rip. I will steal the PC. The rip grabbed the computer and started to shove when he heard a small sound like the cool of a dove. He turned around fast and saw one of Doug's members, Lindsay Ellis herself, who was still dressed like December. The rip looked around to see this hot girl and his robotic cranium started to whirl. Lindsay stared at Rip and said, Mr. Rip, why? Why are you taking my master's stuff? 
Why? Look, you know, they don't rip. What the fell I'm so sick? He fucked up her backside, and he fucked it up quick. He made up with her as she could have escaped. Rip so so rotten, obligatory rape. He rolled up her back and rolled down her front, and actually stuck his head right up her cunt. Lindsay Hillis then watched as the rip burned the place that was stuck in the tank and sent off into space. And when Doug finally heard a room of his burning, he went straight upstairs and his stomach was turning. His entire house was setting on fire. That's not all reviewing is done, you're cheap liar. Paul Root as he dropped an H on, on the stake. Doug tried shooting it, but it was too late. All the other fans in the world were crying as their favorite critic was suddenly dying. They were so damn retarded, you'd think they decided to try and commit motherfucking suicide. They put guns to their heads and enjoyed the ride. Rick finished his review and put it on the net. It was the best angry review by anyone yet. At least to him, that is, because it quickly caught the eyes of no other group than the FBI. As Rick got to his spaceship, he heard dozens of rockets, but that spaceship of his, oh, no rocket could stop it. His ship carried more than the people could imagine and launched them at the Earth. Whatever will happen, his missiles destroyed the United States of But Rick and Hank were the only ones who said, Hooray! All those Americans were going to him. A million times worse than the 9 11. Poo to the fans. Rick was richly humming. They're finding out now that no reviews are coming. They've all heard the news. I know just what they'll do. Their mouths will hang open a minute or two, then the people of Earth will all cry. Hoo hoo! That's a noise, grinned the rip, that I simply must hear. So he paused, and the rip put his wheel to his ear, and he could hear a sound rising over the sky. It started in low, then it went right up high. But the sound wasn't said. Why, this sound sounded merry. It couldn't be so. But it was merry, merry. He stared down at the world. The rip popped his eyes. Then he shook. What he saw was a shocking surprise. Everyone down on the earth, the tall and the small, was singing. Without any U.S. at all, he hadn't stopped fake reviewing. It came. Somehow or other, it came just the same. And the rip, with his red wheels rolling in the tank, stood puzzling and puzzling. Well, there's some things. It came without Spoonie. It came without Sean. It came without cosplays or fan faggot spawn. And he puzzled three hours till his puzzler was sore. Then the rip thought of something he hadn't before. Why haven't he thought I even done this before? Maybe we all should do just a little bit more. And what happened then? Well, the myths were quite right. Only earlier than expected. The world went out of sight. Only two creatures and only one lady who happened to be pregnant with 10,000 babies. And starting from year one, it got really odd when he, he himself, the rip, turned into God. End of the show! Oh yeah! First of all, seeing this person uses the names Doug Walker and Lindsay Ellis implies to me that this is supposed to be a fanfic about the real people. It's not about the nostalgia critic, it's about Doug Walker. So that's one flaw with this little spoof of how the Grinch stole Christmas. Here's another flaw with it. This little fanfic here promotes genocide. It promotes genocide. And this person had the nerve to mention 9-11. So this, this proves to me that this person has no sense of respect, has no sense of how others might feel when they watch this, and it just proves me that this person is a sick, psychotic idiot. So, Mr. Rippity Rip Rip 9-3, you don't like the Nostalgia Critic, huh? Well, I have word for you. How about you don't watch his reviews at all? No one is making you sit down and watch them. So you don't have to watch them if you don't like them. Problem solved. 
And you want to know something? This was incredibly unrealistic. Because, you know, if you tried to do this in real life, you would not get away in your stupid spaceship. You would be thrown in jail for doing what you did. And the fact that you had Lindsay, yes, yes, Lindsay, not the nostalgia chick, get raped? What the fuck is wrong with you, you son of a bitch? You, oh, I'm gonna, oh. Hey, 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 calm down, calm down. No need to get in a tizzy over it. Come on, calm down. Hey, I'll, I'll take that. Thank you very much. Say you don't accidentally shoot yourself. Okay, just calm down. Calm down. You're gonna be okay. Thanks, Susan. I needed that. All right, then. So, to sum up my thoughts about this story, it was awful. It was an abomination. This made the work of Hamo Hamster look good in comparison. Because, yes, Hamo Hamster may write fanfics about the nostalgia critic and the angry video game nerd fucking each other, but at least he doesn't write fanfics about mass murdering reviewers just because she doesn't like them. <sighs> well, I'm the fanfic critic. I read it, you listen, and I have a headache.